You're listening to The Hello Well with Danielle Show, a podcast taking women of color on a journey exploring all things wellness and travel related. We're all about showing you how to put on your oxygen mask first and creating lasting self-care habits that will free you to travel the world and live the life you truly desire and not one you have to fake loving. I'm your host, Danielle Washington. Now let's buckle up and start this journey. Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to another episode of the Hello Well with Danielle podcast. Um, If this is your first time, welcome. Thank you. We're actually doing this video wise. So this is the first time you guys are seeing my face. And so I'm giving you a heads up right now. I won't be always dressed up. Today is not a dressed up day, but you know, I did at least put on lipstick. Um, but if you are returning, thank you for being here. Thank you for riding with us. I really appreciate and I'm so grateful for your support. Um, the comments again have been so beautiful. Those who've been leaving reviews and sending me DMs, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for letting me know that the shows are resonating with you. You're finding them funny. You enjoyed, you know, if you were listening to the other week's um, podcast about, you know, self-care for busy women of color. I heard a couple people saying that they're listening to the Spotify playlist that I created. And so and they're, they're, it's helping them shift their mood. So I'm grateful for that. Today, I wanted to talk about travel and where to go. If you listened to our first episode with um, Dr. Yvette McQueen, aka the Travel Doctor, we talked about you know if you're th- you know how to decide if t- traveling right now is you know right for you during the pandemic. You know where to go in terms of like how to select where to go and what are things doing. Like what are changes with hotels and airports, but. Great. Now you know what to do if you're ready to travel. Let's talk about where to go. Um, I am so itching. Like my passport, like every, I don't know if, I, if you guys are doing this, but I, every now and then I just check to see if my passport's okay. I'm like, is it, is it, is it, is it suffering? Is it, is it feeling lonely? You know, I, you know, I just touch it to just to say like, I have not forgotten you. I have not forsaken you. Um, by this time this year, in, in, in any year, I would have at least traveled 10 to 20 times by now. And, you know, I've gone, I've gone, no, oh, no, I've gone one place. I've gone to Los Angeles. And that was my first time on a flight. I went to surprise my niece for her 21st birthday. And that was my first time being on a flight. And that was interesting watching how people handled that. Um, but I'm, I, I have to say, I'm kind of ready to go somewhere. So, you know, a lot of countries are still close to Americans and other people, but Americans especially. But there are countries that are opening up. And so I wanted today to talk about, you know, what countries are open to Americans? Where can we go? And, you know, what are things you need to consider? So let's start off with what you need to consider kind of if you didn't listen to the podcast with Dr. Vet McQueen, I encourage you possibly to pause this one and then kind of go, go back and listen to the first episode and then come back to this one because I think that information will be helpful. But if you have, let's start and let's rock and let's start with the show. So what are things to consider? A lot of places are requiring you to get a COVID, have a negative COVID test and if you aren't familiar with, you know, the different types or didn't even know the different types, there are different types of COVID tests. I didn't really know either. So don't worry about it. You're not alone. Um, they're pretty much right now that what under my research and I'm first we'll say, I am not a doctor. I don't look like one. I don't play one on TV. So do your research. But from my own little research, I realized that there are two dominant COVID tests and I'm about to botch the first one which is um, the polymerase chain reaction, also lovely known as the PCR um, test. And then there's the antibody testing. The PCR test, which you'll hear as we talk about different places to go, is a test that is um, used to directly detect the presence of antigens rather than the presence of the body's immune response to like antibodies. So this is information to note So you'll have future because some places want you to have the PCR one. So when you are looking for getting a COVID test, it's not just about getting any test and being deemed negative. It's about showing that you've taken the PCR test. So keep that in mind. 
Also, a lot of places are requiring quarantine. It's not all places. And so I've included some that are requiring quarantine just because if that, you know, if this is a place you really want to go, I want to make sure that you know that you can go. You just have to quarantine. Um, and it could be from, you know, five days, seven days, up to 14 days. I am seeing some places that are quarantining up to 14 days once you get there. So keep that in mind. Like, do you really want to go on a vacation and be quarantined for 14 days before you could actually be on vacation? I don't know. For me, no. But, you know, you may be different. Again, another thing I'm noticing people are saying is that they're talking about unique travel insurance. And before COVID, travel insurance was important. And there's so many times I talk to people who didn't have travel insurance and they're now stuck in somewhere a natural disaster happens or something happens. They're like, oh, man, I sure wish I had travel insurance. Travel insurance is something you should have been getting prior to COVID, but even more so now, you're now being required to have it. And not just any insurance, you're going to need to make sure you have insurance that will cover you in case you do get COVID when you, your medical expenses, in case you get COVID in the destination where you're traveling. So you're going to have to need to do your research on the insurance because there are tons and tons and different types of insurances and not all insurance will have this, um, this thing to consider. So keep that in mind. Also note that like hotels are changing. Like a lot of hotels are, you know, are making, you know, touchless check-ins. They are, you know, having plexiglass between you and, you know, the, you know, the person at the front desk. Restaurants are shortening their hours. Bars are being closed. Yes, I said bars are being closed, which kind of sucks. I know. But also nightclubs are being closed. So when you're thinking about where to go, you know, thinking about those party destinations, those party destinations pretty much are not party destinations anymore because the nightclubs and a lot of the bars are closed. So keep that in mind if that's what you're looking for. I, again, look at, do your research before going in destination, but note that a lot of, you know, nightclubs are closed. A great resource that I found um, in terms of figuring out what to do, like what are the rules and regulations for traveling in different countries is American Airlines created this, um, I guess they did partner with uh, Sherpa. I don't really know. There's some company named Sherpa. I don't really know about Sherpa. But if you, you know, Google American Airlines Sherpa, it's kind of a bomb little tool. Um, and it's great because you can literally go through this tool and type in the country where you're trying to go and the country you're coming from. And it'll give you a detail, like all the things you need. For example, I looked up Italy because I really want to go back to Italy. I'm missing Italy. I was supposed to take my nephew to Italy uh, this year. And I don't think we're going to go. It's October and I'm pretty positive we're not going to make it to Italy this year. Sorry, Jeremiah. I love you though. Um, But looking at, I did the example of going from the United States to Italy and it was interesting. So I can see, you know, you know what I can do if, if I wanted to go. And what I found interesting is that you had to, for like going to Sicily or Naples and a couple other places, and maybe with Sardinia, you had to give them 48 hours, like to kind of register 48 hours beforehand that you were going. So, you know, I would automatically think if I've, you know, if I'm clear to go to Italy to travel, that means I could travel anywhere in Italy and I shouldn't have to have any other issues once I'm actually in the country. But by reading this, I was like, oh, there's certain regions have extra restrictions and things that you need to go through. And so I really think whatever this American Airlines Sherpa, shout out to American Airlines. I really love the Sherpa because it's just an easy tool to kind of see what you need to know before you go. So now that said, let's get into the places that Americans can travel right now um, if you want to travel outside of the country. First spot is Mexico. Of course, Mexico is, you know, our neighbor. It's close. It's easy to get to. There's discounted flights. You know, the flights are short. It's a no brainer um, if Mexico was a place you like to go. Um, the other great thing, if you're thinking about Mexico, is that there are no requirements. There's no requirement for COVID, negative COVID testing. So if you don't want to take the test, I have taken the test. I'm not sure which per- version I took. I know is I took the one that they put up your nose and I won't front. That was like hella painful. Like in the head nerves. This is my small rant. This woman had nerves be like, don't squint. And I was like, dude. You put this up your nose and see if the, how much this hurts. Um, but, I, you know, once it was over like that, 
I was fine. I had no problems and kept it moving. And I was negative. But um, Mexico isn't requiring you to take the test. So if that's something you don't want to do, you know, it's, you know, it's a hoop that you don't have to go through. They are checking temperatures upon arrival. You know, they are requesting that people wear masks. And so know that, you know, they are taking precautions. They aren't, you know, going nilly willy and saying, you know, come on in. We're doing nothing. So there are precautions. The weather is still great. So it's, you know, there are spots. If you are thinking about, you know, looking for privacy or spots that are a little bit more isolate, you know, consider getting like a villa and going to, you know, outside of places like, you know, Tulum and stuff like that. Look at going to like Puerto Vallada or Punta Mita or Cabo as another option as well. Uh, And, you know, also I would recommend looking for standalone rooms and villas. It's a way to kind of minimize you being around other people. I do know some tours are open. So, you know, just make sure you are looking at the tours and what they're doing. Look at reviews to see if, you know, people felt safe on the tours, or if they felt like, mm, it's just, it wasn't, you know, safe, not safe as in my life is in danger, but safe as in, are they taking precautions in regards to COVID? Also check in about pools and beaches. You know, not all pools and beaches are open depending on the hotels and the area. So keeping that in mind as well. But Mexico is an easy no brainer option. But if you're looking for something different, if you're looking for something that, you know, I personally would want a place that is checking if people are coming in are getting COVID tests. And so a place I would think about going and it's kind of top on my list is going to the French Polynesia. And, you know, that includes like Tahiti, Bora Bora, Murray Islands, like all those type of places. They opened up in July 15th. And so that's been a while. They've been open for a bit. They actually had one of the strictest lockdowns globally. So I kind of feel like if I was going to go somewhere, I feel like they've been on their stuff in terms of making sure not only their you know, residents are safe, but they're, you know, they've taken the precautions to make sure when people are coming in are doing the same thing. So they're one of those countries who is asking for a COVID test within 72 hours. They're actually looking for people to, again, have the PCR test. So you got to make sure that you have the acceptable test to be even considered to be eligible to come to the country. They are asking for travel insurance uh, to make sure that you have travel insurance that will cover your medical costs in case you do get COVID while you're there. And then you have to fill out a sanitary entry form that details like your health and that you agree to report symptoms and stuff like that. Another thing I love about it. So if you've ever been to Bora Bora, you know, you typically know that you're greeted with this beautiful flower lay upon arrival. Nowadays, there's a stand that says, hey, over there, go get your lay. Welcome to Bora Bora. And that's just a great way to keep the culture and the traditions that people are used to, but also add in a social distance kind of method. So I love that. And if you are thinking about going to the French Polynesia, you know, I personally... I would say I really would love to go to Murray Island. I actually was supposed to go to Murray Island last year and missed my flight. And that's a whole other conversation about that. It's the first time I ever missed my flight. And not because I wasn't there on time, not because of some, it was over some BS. And that's, it's such BS. I'm I'm not going to go there because I'm going to be really salty for the rest of this podcast. We're not going to be salty. We're going to be in a good mood. But um, I think Moray Island, which is very close to Tahiti. Tahiti is nice. Don't get me wrong. You've never been to Tahiti. I definitely recommend it. Tahiti is, you know, the biggest island there and it's most populated. So but the thing is, it's the most populated um, it, island in the country. Most people typically will stay in Tahiti like one or two days. So they'll either stay like the day that they actually arrive and then maybe the day before they're about to leave because it's actually where most people fly in and out of. And so because you'll need to get like a ferry or another smaller flight from the other to the other islands and they kind of run sporadically. So like one thing I loved about Moray Island is Moray Island is the closest to Tahiti, you know, and it. It's pretty cheap. Like there's a cheap ferry that takes 30 minutes or there's a five minute flight. So it's an easy way to get back and forth to if you have a flight. And so I, I love it. But Murray Island was just a little bit more intimate, 
Bora Bora is another spot as well. So, you know, again, you have options when you were considering the French Polynesia, but for a company, a country that really was strict about their own lockdown and really took this, you know, pandemic serious. And it's such a beautiful, beautiful part of the world. Um, if you love beaches and you love just kind of just chilling, if you're just looking to get away and just breathe, I think it's such a great option. Another option I would consider is Kenya. Kenya is open. Um, they require a negative COVID test within the 96 hours. Once you enter, you do have to pass a health screening. And if you're thinking about going, October is great. It's probably one of the last months to go. It's the last month of the dry season. So if you're thinking about going, I would go now before you get into November. Um, they did have, oh, I will I will say this, like in September, like as of September 20th, because I looked at the numbers, they had um, about 38,000 confirmed cases and 700 deaths. So, you know, that's not so bad. But what they are doing is they are enforcing a curfew. But, you know, if nightclubs are closed and bars are most likely closed and restaurants are closing at 10 p.m., um, I guess a curfew really doesn't matter. So their curfew is from, I believe, 11 p.m. to 4 a.m. So I don't know what happens if you if you're outside the curfew. I've never I've never been in a place that had a curfew. Um, and I've always kind of got around my own curfew as a child. So I don't know. Um, but again, if the bars are closed, the restaurants are closed um, by 10 o'clock. And I don't even know if bars are open. I think I kind of need to go back and look at that one. But, you know, the curfew may not be that big of a deal. One thing that people do go to Kenya for, obviously, are the safaris. So note that safaris are still open. There are safaris that are, you know, taking precautions during COVID. So if you are thinking about going to Kenya, know that the safaris are still an option and it's a great way, you know, to enjoy the country and, and uh, still be safe. So I think Kenya is a great option. Another option I really love is the Maldives. You know, I'm a beach person. Like I, I, I've been on safaris and they've been interesting. I'm, I'm just, I'm not a safari girl. Uh, if you lived in the Bay Area, I grew up in the Bay Area and I still live in the Bay Area. And there was this place called Marine World Africa, USA. And for me, like that was my zoo. I actually never been to a zoo until I was an adult. But so, you know, you would go in this truck and you would see the wild animals, wild, I air quote, wild animals. You would see the giraffes and the tigers and the lions and the elephants all about. And like, when I went on a real safari, I'm like, oh, this kind of reminds me of Marine World Africa, USA. Again, no, it's not exactly the same, but it was just like, it was anticlimactic for me. And it also know that this is just not my thing. I'm a beach girl. So that's why I love the idea of going to a place like the Maldives or going to the French Polynesia. The Maldives, they opened also in July. They also, you know, they did have, and they did really have um, some strict um, policies when going in. I think when they first opened up, they had a 14 day quarantine. They no longer have the 14 day quarantine, but they did have like a spike in cases in September. So keep that in mind. In terms of requirements, they do ask for you to have a COVID test within the a negative COVID test within 17 hours. Again, there is no mandated quarantine like they were doing. If you've never been to the Maldives, Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. You know, they're known for their overwater bungalows, which is great because, again, you're not, you have your own little space, you have your own villa. Um, each hotel actually typically is its own island. So select one that fits right for you. So look at what the hotel's doing, look at kind of what, you know, precautions they're taking, and look what activities they have that meets your needs in terms of, you know, what to do during these times. And so I think it's a great way to get away in a remote area and just chill, enjoy life, enjoy the weather. And like the best time is like, I would say, I would say to wait until like the end of October, early November to avoid the wet season. But like, like it's definitely by November, it is on and popping and is definitely a definite destination I would consider going now or if you're thinking about traveling during the holidays, that may be a great option to consider. Um, a lot of countries also in the Caribbean are open right now. So I'm going to talk about a couple of those. So 
we have Turks and Caicos, which is great. Um, beautiful island known for their just the most crystal blue water. Um, and there's, you know, you can get an Airbnb. There's so many different Airbnb options that are reasonably priced. So that may be a way to consider versus staying in a hotel. Um, the only thing you need to consider is, you know, again, negative tests. They ask for you to have a negative test results within five days. You also have to fill out an online questionnaire and have travel insurance. St. Lucia is another country that's, you know, allowing Americans in as well. And they're a little bit different. So I wanted to point this out. So like, whereas, you know, you have Jamaica as well that, you know, start, you know, letting people in, um, in, I believe, September or so, maybe actually early in September. And a lot of people have been going to Jamaica. You need a COVID negative test and the test needs to be dated within 10 days of arrival. So they give you plenty, plenty, plenty of time to get through. Um, yeah, I'll just leave it at that with that one. But like St. Lucia, gorgeous, gorgeous island, another island for relaxation, but they have you know, a lot of good natural places for like hiking and some other things, if that's something you want to get out and do. So like, I think, but the situation I would want to point out with St. Lucia that I thought was really interesting was, yes, they were expecting you to get, you know, a PCR COVID test within seven days. You know, you have to complete a travel registration form. Um, You have to have a confirmed reservation with a COVID certified property for the full duration of your trip. So if you're like me, sometimes I'll do is I'll book a hotel for like one or two days and then I'll just wing it. I like to wing it sometimes in my in a country. Like I may decide I want to go somewhere else or, you know, a different part of the country. And so I don't like to have a full reservation, you know, from the entire duration. However, if you're going to St. Lucian, they're actually expecting you to have a reservation at a COVID certified property. So that means I don't, you'd have to look to make sure that if you are looking at an Airbnb that they're COVID certified, it may not be the case. But if you're looking at a hotel, you need to be make sure that they're COVID certified and that you have a confirmed reservation for the entire time you are in the country. So that's something to consider. The other thing to consider I thought was kind of entry is that tourists must stay where they are registered unless the hotel has set up an approved excursion. So I kind of feel you're on lockdown, but like with benefits, lockdown with benefits if you go to St. Lucia. So I don't know. I, I'm I'm curious to see what that looks like. But for me, that just seems a little bit strict but it maybe it's not as strict as it sounds. It just kind of sounded strict to me. So like, um, and then again, you need travel medical insurance um, to make sure that you are co- covered in case you get COVID while you are traveling there. St. Martin, another country, St. Martin, and I think St. Vincent um, has similar uh, restrictions. So if you're thinking about going to any of those countries, uh, they respect the negative PCR test, uh, within, I think, uh, so I think St. Martin's 120 day, 20 hours prior to, um, but then actually I was wrong. So St. Vincent actually, if I remember now, actually respects people to quarantine. So if you are going to St. Vincent, you have to quarantine for five days in your hotel. And so keep that in mind. It's not a long, you know, it's not 14 days, but if you're going to St. Vincent, you do have to quarantine for five days, whereas St. Martin, all you have to do is have the negative test within 120 hours um, and you're good. There's no quarantine. There's no, you know, certified COVID hotel or, you know, having to, you know, only have your excursions to the hotels. And that's the other thing. Having your excursion to the hotels can sometimes be costly. So that's why when looking at St. Lucia, I was like, hmm, like I already know booking an excursion to the hotel is going to be extra. Like what is it going to be currently during the pandemic time frame versus finding an excursion, you know, off the beat, not off the beaten path, but like just not through a hotel, which sometimes I feel like they mark things up. You sometimes can get great deals, but I sometimes feel like hotels do mark things up. I don't know. That's my thought process. Another location I love that's open to Americans is Morocco. Morocco is beautiful. It's Northern Africa. You know, it's a great time to go. You know, right right now, the weather is, I would say, like high 60s, like low 80s. You know, it's great weather for sightseeing. It's not too hot. 
you know, just kind of, I call it that Goldilocks weather. Um, it's just, it's great. It's a great time to go. So like, but if you're thinking about going November, it does get windy. So keep that in mind. So like, if you're thinking about going, I think October is a great month to go. They do require you to have a negative COVID test within 48 hours. Um, they, there is no quarantine, but there are limited flights. So keep that in mind. Um, their COVID numbers also have been increasing since September. I think they've had like a hundred, like a thousand new cases a day. So that's something also to consider, but it's just a beautiful country to see. And, you know, I know a lot of people talk about going to Morocco and I've heard, you know, I've heard both sides of the story. So some people say, oh my God, Morocco is not safe. I didn't feel safe as a woman. Some people say I felt safe as a woman. I think overall, honestly, I think it's a very safe country in terms of just like violent crimes, but like any other place, but especially here, and whether you're a woman or not, you know, you have to look out for what I call basic travel crimes. But I think there's probably these basic travel crimes happen a little bit more in Morocco. So like, pickpocketing, scams and harassments, you know, great thing to consider is if someone seems like that friendly, you know, local who's like, oh, I just want to show you around. Like you're here. Let me show you to these great shops. Like, oh, come look at the shop or, you know, I just want to show you this thing. You know, it's free. Like, don't worry about it. I just want to show you around. Nothing is free. Don't assume it's free because best believe after they've shown you everything, whatever, they're going to ask you for money. So, you know, if someone starts asking, like, I want to be that your free tour guide, run the other direction. I mean, you don't have to run, but like you need to go in the other direction and be like, no, no, thank you. Because, you know, people are known to be harassed, you know, for like buying things or scammed and, you know, pickpocketing. So just be cautious. You know, there's something to be cautious in any country. But like definitely places like Morocco and Rome, I would say be very cautious of pickpockers in Athens. Oh, my God. Be definitely um, cautious about pickpocketing. But Morocco is one of the places where you need to be cautious as for pickpocketing. If you're considering going and you're going as a woman alone, I always want to make sure that I've kind of given what I would say my safety tips for places like this. So I'd say, you know, make sure you're dressing conservatively, you know, don't walk alone at night. Uh, don't take, you know, always negotiate your taxi prices up front. Um, and just, you know, be cautious and know that, you know, when I say dress conservatively, I probably shouldn't mention this a little bit further, like wear a long skirt or dresses, like you just need to have your knees covered and, you know, respect the culture that you're, you know, of, of where you are. Um, and so other places that are open also are the UK. So you can go to England. It's like, yay, I can go to England. However, if you want to go to England, which is beautiful during the holiday season, like one of my favorite places to go in the holiday season is Italy. I think Italy just does a great job in the holidays, but you know, the UK is great too, but they are doing a 14 day quarantine. They are one of the places that has one of the longest quarantine, quarantine timeframes. So it's hella expensive to be in London. Um, so I don't know if I'd want to be in London or in the UK or England, you know, quarantine for 14 days, knowing that I'm wasting 14 days and spending 14 days worth of hotel expenses in expensive blank uh, London. So I don't know if it, it would take a lot for me to say, I'm going to London right now. But if that is a place that you really love and you're considered going, I definitely say consider it. it is open. It is an option. Um, I just don't think it's an option I personally would take. Other places that are open are Granada. Grenada, I would say it wrong. Um, Malta, Panama is another great option. St. Bart's, Montenegro. We talked about Jamaica. Honduras is open, Ireland's open, Haiti is open, Dubai is open, Costa Rica is open. Costa Rica at first was open only to like nine states. And I was just like, oh, California is not on the list. Now they're more open. There's, you know, there are, there are some restrictions there as well. There are quarantines. So keep that in mind. You know, Croatia has been open. It's like one of the only places in, you know, the U in the EU, um, Turkey is open as well. Tunisia is open. Cambodia is open, but a lot of other places just aren't open. So those are some of the spots. Like if you were like, I just want to travel right now. Those are some of the spots that I would consider going because those are the spots that are open to Americans. So again, keep in mind, 
If you are thinking about going, what kind of, you know, do you need a, you know, COVID test? Do you need to make sure that it's the PCR test? You know, what kind of travel insurance do you need? You know, and what if you're looking at different travel insurance, make sure that it includes medical costs if you end up getting COVID while you are traveling in another country. Uh, you know, and what are the countries doing for COVID safety? Safety. Look at their numbers. Look at their numbers to see, you know, where are they now? Like, you know, they might have been in September or August really well when they opened up, but their numbers may be spiking right now or when you're thinking about traveling. So keep that in mind when you are looking to travel. Look at, you know, what their country is doing and the destination is doing, what the hotel is doing in terms of COVID safety. And what are their numbers saying? Other than that, if you want to travel, travel. Like I know a lot of people are shaming people about traveling during COVID or just traveling in general right now. Like how would you travel? That's so frivolous. Like you're putting your life in danger. You're putting your family in danger. If it fits you and it's something you want to do and you're missing it, I say go for it. I just say, you know, be cautious and make sure you're taking the right precautions behind it and protecting yourself. But, you know, you can't stay inside forever and you have to know what's right for you. What's right for one person is not right for the other. You know, I will probably travel soon. I just don't know where or how far. Um, I think that I have been watching way too much CNN. And so I just know a lot. But, you know, I've been kind of obsessed with the long haulers and knowing that, you know, we're seeing signs where people had COVID and they, you know, are having memory issues or breathing issues. And so... I go back and forth like I really want to travel, but I really want to be safe. And so it's a personal choice. I say make the choice that's right for you. I would love to continue this conversation. So let me know. Are you considering traveling? Where are you considering traveling? If you traveled, like where have you gone and what was it like? You know, you know, I've seen so many pictures. I mean, a lot of my friends are travelers or live in other countries and they're like living their best life. And so it all depends on what's right for you in the moment. So uh, let us know in the DMs, in our Facebook group, or you know, comments on our Instagram page, what's going on in your world? What are you thinking about going? Where, you know, when, what's right for you? So other than that, I will talk to you guys next week. Have a great week and make sure you're staying hella well and taking care of you. Talk to y'all later. Ciao. Thanks for joining us this week on the Hello Well with Danielle show. Make sure to visit our website, hellowellwithdanielle.com, where you can subscribe to our show on iTunes, Spotify, and Amazon Music, and never miss an episode. Also, you can follow us on social media at Hello Well with Danielle on Facebook and Instagram, and Hello Well Danny on Twitter. And if you like Hella 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 Love the Show and got some good nuggets out of it, know that I'm not too proud to ask for you to please leave a rating or review on iTunes so that we can continue to expand our reach and help other women of color. Again, thanks so much for listening, and I hope to see you next week. Ciao!